So overall, you are seeing inflation across the globe, and one should expect that you know, pricing will also appear in the sporting suit industry, so we expect to increase prices next year. But I really think that the bigger challenge in the global economy is much more the impact on global freight rates and the constraint on containers. And that is what everybody's experienced at this point in time. That there is a dramatic imbalance of uh, the goods that needs to be you know, transported from Asia back into Europe or the US. And I would say if you look upon the sum of challenges, having a much more stabilized and reliable uh, distribution infrastructure next year is more important uh, for us and is a bigger challenge for most industries than the input cost. Morning, Casper. Really good to see you. I'm, I'm, I'm loving the, the tracks that you're rocking as well this morning. It looks great. Look, look, in terms of these cost pressures going forward, I really want to understand what's going on. That's why I ask people like you. Look, let's just, just remind our viewers, you were at Henkel before, so you know a lot about cost pressures as well from both companies as well. Logistics, you just mentioned, raw materials, employees. Are any of these cost pressures set to abate in 2022? No, and I don't, you know, we're not expecting that. We will see an increase in labor costs across the globe. We will see an increase in raw materials, and we are going to see an increase in transportation costs. That is the way, you know, the global economy is going, and I think it would be naive to believe that that would disappear. And I think it's then up to us to figure out to which extent can we mitigate, but at the same time, we don't want to compromise in quality. You know, we are a very well-known brain. We want to make certain that the products that you know, parents and kids buy for the upcoming Christmas, that they're actually having the right quality. So you are going to see price increases in most industries, including ours. And I think it would be illusion to believe that that pressure is going to go, and win, go away in 22. Casper, from one middle-aged man to another, it's hard to believe that you're in the fashion business. Thank but you. you. Are, yeah, exactly. You are in the fashion business. Uh, and the fact of the matter is the fashion business has been one of the biggest perpetrators of crimes against the planets over the years as well. Is Adidas doing enough to increase the price point so that actually people don't just buy stuff and throw it away uh, on too regular basis? Yes, I do think we are doing that. I don't think that we have cheap products. And if you look upon in our sustainability strategy, we've been very clear that by 2025, nine out of 10 products will be made by sustainable materials. But this is a consistent challenge, and I think it's important that global companies like an Adidas take a lead position. And that's also why we've been so outspoken about you know, the responsibility we have in the area of you know, in sustainability and taking a very clear stand on the nine out of 10 products for 2025. Casper, you're pretty much already um, calling uh, the end of 2021, I guess, and looking forward to 2022. Can you share with us just some of your expectations around uh, the trends for next year? I'm, I'm particularly interested in inventory management, given uh, how much you've told us about um, lack of visibility on the pandemic situation in China and other parts of Asia. We're actually quite uh, optimistic about the uh, going into next year, and we think we're going to be growing at least in the 8 to 10% range for next year. So we think that the, you know, the sporting goods industry will return to a bit much more normalized growth. Inventory, inv inventory is going to be low by the end of the year simply because of supply chain challenges. It might be high in some countries, but globally it will be low. Um, so uh, particularly in the first quarter, you are going to see product shortages due to Vietnam closure. But overall, we actually expect a very, very solid uh, 2022 and going into that year, quite optimistic. It is a year we'll continue to have volatility as we've seen in 21. It's very difficult to predict what's happening. But overall, we see the sporting goods industry coming back. And you can see it uh, in the stadiums. Uh, we predicted that when the stadiums would fill up, football business would grow. And we're seeing that we're experiencing double digit growth in our football. Uh, and we're seeing that across, you know, the world and also in the Premier League. The stadiums are full. You know, I believe Arsenal has now run of 11 games uh, without a defeat and a completely full stadium. So, you know, normalizing helps our industry and also helps the demand in our industry. So we expect a good 2022.